Hey, y'all, welcome back to the podcast. You know, this is a very somber podcast. I'm not playing any music. I have some things I want to get off my chest, okay? I am sick and tired of what I've been seeing today. So thank you for joining me. This is the MVMO podcast, my view, my opinion. Okay, let me just jump to it. So a lot of you know that because I'm a low-key blogger over here, I've been keeping abreast of all the updates on Sean Combs so that when something major happens, I can hop on during my lunch break or whatever, and we can talk about it. Well, as I've been keeping myself abreast of things, I have been seeing so many times people saying, look at this, Reggie Wright was right. You know, everybody should have been listening to Gene Deal years ago. Now, let me briefly tell you who these two people are. I don't want to assume that everyone listening knows. Now, I'm not going to go into an expose because they don't deserve that. They really don't even deserve to be talked about here. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Let me calm down. So Reggie Wright Jr., okay, he at one time, a long time ago, he's an older man now, he was the general manager of Death Row Records, okay? Now, Gene Deal. Gene Deal is also an older man now, but at one time, a long time ago, he was a bodyguard for Puffy, all right? Now, Gene, and um, you can go into YouTube and put in either of these men's name, and it'll pull up tons of videos of them talking. So again, I'm not here to give an expose. I'll let you, if you really want to know more about them, uh, kind of do that footwork on your own. But let me go back to what I was saying. So today, as I was keeping up with things, I kept seeing so many people saying, see there, see there, see there. Everybody should have listened to what Reggie said and what uh, Gene Deal been saying. Uh, Reggie predicted you know, months ago that Sean was going to be investigated by the feds and his homes was going to be read, uh, raided. Listen to this video. Watch this video. Now, I'm going to just say this. I've been aware for several real years of who Gene Deal is and Reggie Wright, and I've watched some of their videos. But this is what I want to say. We have got things so screwed up and backwards. These two men do not deserve praise, in my opinion. They deserve to be in jail, just like Keefe D's in jail. You know what, Reggie, if you're listening, I think I'll make a prediction. You know, you're really good on making these predictions. I think I'll give it a go. I'm going to make two. What about it? I think I'm going to predict. Let's see. Hmm. I think I'll predict that you, you'll be in jail within four months. What do you think about it? You see, I worked with abused people for close to two decades. I have no mercy. I have no empathy, no sympathy for people who want to sit around and talk all day and all night. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but talk for years about stuff they saw, stuff they heard, and yet they never went to the police. They never reported these things so that they could help people not become victim to the very things they claimed they saw and heard about. So no, I don't think that Reggie Wright Jr. or Gene Deal are are heroes, nor should they be praised. For what? Because they can put one, uh, in terms of Reggie saying that the houses were going to get raided, he can put one to one and one together and come up with two. That's called common sense. He didn't give some sort of prophetic revelatory word that he should be praised for. Would to God, all of us don't want to be these two men. What do I, what do I mean? Here it is now. They're both in their older age. And how are they making money? sitting around on the internet, being quote unquote interviewed, and they're not really being interviewed. They're just running their mouth, talking about this story, all these back in the day day stories about crime. Okay. So we're not sitting around talking about how we help people. We help change the world, all the positive we've done. We're sitting around talking about, they're sitting around rather talking about all the crimes they witnessed and who did this and who screwed such and such and who raped such and such and who did this. First of all, why would anyone want to sit around in their older years regurgitating all this crap? For the love of God, why would they want to get paid for it? Why do y'all think Reggie Wright is so ill? Why do y'all think he is? I really think that we are here in in America. We really don't understand this synergistic being we are. You know, all the crap that Reggie's talked about for years, all that stuff is sitting in his conscience. And that's not including the stuff he ain't never told nobody. Like maybe if he committed crimes, maybe if he was a part of something he shouldn't have been a part of, that he claimed he never did. All that stuff is sitting there. And there's no way that those types of things, those wicked, evil deeds that you saw, heard about, witnessed, possibly, possibly, maybe, allegedly were a part of. You don't think that's going to affect someone's physical well-being? We think we can really sit around and talk about, you know, every other day or whenever these interviews are filmed, all the grotesque things and that not go right back down into our souls and our spirit and our physical body and affect our health. It seems to me other cultures understand the connection, the real connection between mind, body and, and spirit and the things we say and talk about and think on and regurgitate. Those things matter. 
Again, I'm not even talking about the things he may, 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 may have been a part of or definitely witnessed according to his own account. So no, I don't think nobody should be saying Reggie was right. Everybody need to support Reggie. For what? Who did he help? Who, who, who did he stop from being a victim? He only started talking when there was a check connected to it. That's not, that's not some hero. That's pathetic. In my opinion, in my opinion, he's pathetic. So is Gene. So is Gene. So is Keefe D. Keefe D trying to, you know, and, and you know, the reason that they do this kind of stuff is not only because it's lucrative, but because all of us who are fans of hip hop and some of these people they were connected to working for around, we want to hear stories about these people and they know it. So they capitalize off it. Gene Deal, most of his stuff, I personally believe were lies, just stuff he made up because it was interesting and it got more money, more clicks and views. And then he was getting a bigger paycheck to sit down and be interviewed. No different than Reggie. I don't believe everything that Reggie says. Now, that doesn't mean that the things that Reggie is saying are are all false. I'm just telling you my opinion. I mean, I could not believe it. I thought, do people not understand that Reggie Wright and Gene Deal, let me just focus on Reggie, that Reggie was a part of the Hands Across America? Or let me say it this way, the Hands Across the Community that kept this wicked man going? Because all of us know that in order for someone to be a Sean Combs, they have to be surrounded by enablers, men and women who kept their mouth shut because there was some advantage to them to do so. How is that honorable? How, how, how should we go around or why should we go around saying these people need to be listened to? They need to be up under a jail. Reggie and Jean need to be up under a jail for the things that they saw that they never reported. You say, what are you talking about, woman, when you say the hands across America? A lot of you will remember in the 80s, there was a commercial. You know, there were varying, uh, there are variations of this commercial. I'm just going to play for you now the MTV, the MTV uh, version of Hands Across America. It was basically a commercial where people in America locked hands. And in the video, this is audio only, but if you've ever, if you recall seeing the video, you saw the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Americans holding hands all on the mountains, all on the, on the sand, on the beaches, right? They were all holding hands because they were supporting each other as for, for some good cause. Well, just like people lock hands and they support each other for a good cause, people lock hands in the circle of silence. There's no way Puff could have even been around all these years had people opened their mouth when it mattered. So take a listen to this Hands Across America commercial because I'm telling you, it's the same thing. Uh, it's just on the side for evil. Take a listen. What has 12 million eyes, over 50 million fingers, and reaches from the Statue of Liberty all the way to the Pacific Ocean? Hands Across America, a human chain for miles long, ocean to ocean, coast to coast. It started with the music, and now it's your turn. Six million people, including some of the leading names in rock and roll, will join hands on May 25th to fight hunger in the United States, and MTV can help put you there. Learn more about Hands Across America. Watch for further developments on MTV. So as I said, him and Gene, not to mention all the other people that give these interviews and have been for years, they're just a part of the Hands Across Hip Hop that kept this wickedness going. Now, I don't know about Gene's spirituality, but I know that Reggie Wright Jr. many times has mentioned the fact that, you know, he's a Christian, he's a Bible believer, but I wonder if he's aware of Leviticus 5.1. I'm going to read a couple of translations for you. The first translation I'm going to read is the New Living Translation, and this is what God said. So this was God talking. He was talking to the children of Israel, and in Leviticus, he was giving them the laws. He was telling them and teaching them how to interact with each other. And this is one of the things he said. If you are called to testify about something you have seen or that you know about, it is sinful to refuse to testify, and you will be punished for your sin. Let me give you another uh, de- uh, scripture, excuse me, variation of that. The Christian Standard Bible says, when, God, when someone sins in any of these ways, if he has seen, heard, or known Reggie about something he has witnessed, and he did not respond to a public call to testify, he will bear his iniquity. And I tell you, 
all these people we see who are who are uh, have all these illnesses, they are bearing their iniquity. They're bearing their iniquity. And you can bear iniquity in all kinds of ways. It's not just sickness and illness. And again, let's be clear, not everyone who's sick. So I'm not saying, so don't read into my words. I have not said here, nor have I, uh, you know, tried to say that every person who's sick is bearing some sort of sin. No, I'm saying that some people are. And in my view, my opinion, he's one of them. I mean, if you've heard some of the gory stories this man tells, it's like, why do you even want to, why do you even want to talk about that? Why do you even want to remember that kind of stuff? Instead of this man at his age, and I'm really heavily focusing on him because that's who everybody was focusing on today. Instead of this man at his age and stage of life, and especially in his health condition, instead of him, him being somewhere with his wife or his grandchildren, if he has them, sharing stories about how he helped make the world a better place, how he should, they're, they're proud of him, uh, granddaddy or daddy. We're proud of you. You you did this, you did that. All this man got to talk about is all the gory crimes he witnessed, how this one was raped and this one potentially was screwed in the butt. Like all that kind of, like, what is that? At your age, why are you doing that? Well, we know why you're getting a check. But no, as I let you go, he's no hero. He's a zero. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you on the next podcast.